Hello, this is Vox African News from our London studios. I'm Pamela Bonkyung. The United Nations has released a report which states 260,000 Somalians died in the 2010 to 2012 famine. According to this report, half of those dead were children under the age of five. Slow responses to the situation is one of the major factors believed to have been accelerated the deaths. The number is higher than the famine casualties of 1992, which stood at an estimated 220,000. Al-Shabaab is said to have worsened the situation by denying aid agencies access to its strongholds of southern Baku and Lower Shabelle regions. Media freedom in Kenya still remains restrictive, though improvements have allowed for the boundaries of investigative journalism to be pushed. However, investigative journalism remains a risky business, with journalists receiving threats and intimidation, forcing some to leave the country for some periods of time. The situation has improved from the days of the authoritarian leadership of Daniel Arab Moore, who arrested and tortured journalists. Nowadays, journalists are willing to go where they never did before, covering subjects from drug scandals and criminal gangs to human interest stories. Journalists in Kenya moan the low quality of journalism as many people seem to go for slapdash stories while sacrificing information on serious matters. In Kenya, we are used to this culture of uh, you are threatened, you run out of the country. But for how long am I going to run? I have been to Germany, I have been to Norway, you know, I have been to other African countries. For how long am I going to run because of telling the truth? We have evolved a big deal. We can boast that this country is, uh, you know, enjoying press freedom. I think if the Freedom House did an index of press freedom, uh, Kenya would rank among the free countries. I would be surprised if it doesn't. In the past, we've ranked from not free to partially free. But I think right now one can probably say that, uh, you know, the press in Kenya is enjoying press freedom. The younger generation, journalists coming in, who are not essentially, strictly speaking, trained in the traditional sense of journalism the functioning of the media or the traditional functions of the media have been eroded because also perhaps it's society which is evolving so that people are no longer too seriously involved in uh, serious issues. Uh, people want to get by with the bare minimum information. The wife of the former president of Ivory Coast, Simone Gbagbo, has been admitted to hospital. Her lawyer announced on Thursday that she was undergoing medical checkup. Simone, who has been under house arrest while Alassane Ouattara's government decides whether to send her to face charges at The Hague, has an arrest warrant issued by the International Criminal Court for Crimes Against Humanity. She has been charged with genocide and economic crimes related to the conflict which followed the November 2010 elections when her husband, Laurent Bagbo, refused to leave office. Today marks the United Nations uh, World Press Freedom Day at, and it was marked um, yesterday um, at the headquarters of the UN in New York. The UN remarked that 2012 was the deadliest year for reporters and also this had a record number of imprisonments. Today marks the 20th anniversary of World Press Freedom Day since it was officially launched by the UN General Assembly in 1993. This year's theme is Save to Speak. Bloggers around the world have been reflecting on their work as the D day approaches. Nine out of ten. G uh, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon criticized persecution of journalists demanding it should cease. The year has been particularly rough on correspondents around the globe. 2012 was the deadliest year ever for reporters. Over 120 journalists were killed and already this year in 2012, 26 journalists, our colleagues and our friends, have died reporting the news. Imprisonment of journalists worldwide also reached a record high. As we gather here today, over 200 journalists languish in jail, a 25% increase from the year before. Nine out of 10 cases of crimes against journalists, media workers, and social media producers go unpunished. Mr. Secretary General just reminded us of that. This cannot stand. Violence and impunity undermine basic rights and freedoms. They erode public faith in the rule of law, they encourage self-censorship, and they poison governance. I condemn all such attacks and repression. I'm especially concerned that so many of the perpetrators escape any form of punishment. All journalists across all media need to be able to do their jobs. 
When it is safe to speak, the whole world benefits. I now have with conflict rocking the Sahel for the past month, many refugees from the Central African Republic have found refuge in Chad's Amboko camp. The camp was built 10 years ago in southern Chad by the United Nations Refugees Agency, UNHCR. The over 32,000 refugees have learned to become self-sufficient thanks to a European Union-funded program. The EU socio-economic integration program aims to develop agricultural resources. Most of the refugees were given funds to start small businesses, local Chadians who live with the refugees have also benefited from the program. A lawyer who was investigating the assassination of Benazir Bhutto, who was shot, de was shot dead as he drove to court this morning. Shaudri Zulfikar Ali was investigating the 2007 killing of the former Prime Minister, a case for which former President Pervez Musharraf is under house arrest for. Ali was attacked on a busy street in the Pakistani capital Islamabad by unidentified gunmen riding on motorbikes. His car was rained with bullets and he later died of his injuries at a nearby hospital. Ali had been acting as a state prosecutor in one of the cases against Musharraf. Musharraf is blamed for not using his powers as president back then to provide Bhutu with adequate security. Israel's Justice Minister Zipi Lifni met with UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon on Thursday at the United Nations headquarters in New York. Lifni is expected to discuss the Israeli-Palestinian peace process. She had been designated by Netanyahu to be his chief peace negotiator. Direct peace talks between Israel and the Palestinians broke down in 2010 over the issue of continued Jewish settlement building on 1967 land. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas says he will not return to the table until the there is a construction freeze. Israel, on its part, says there should be no preconditions. Fraudster James McCormick has been jailed for 10 years for selling fake bomb detectors. McCormick, 57, of Longport, Somerset, perpetuated a callous confidence trick, said the Old Bailey judge. He is thought to have made £50 million from sales of more than 7,000 of the fake devices to countries including Iraq. The fraud promoted a full sense of security and contributed to death and injury, the, the judge also said. He also described the profit as outrageous. Police earlier said the ADE-651 device is modelled on a novelty golf ball finder are still in use at some checkpoints. A five-year-old boy in the United States shot his sister with his gun in what has been called a tragic accident. Caroline Stacks, who was two, was killed when her brother accidentally shot her while playing with his .22 caliber gun, which was given to him as a present. The children's parents had been outside in the garden when the incident happened, according to Kentucky police. Kentucky has one of the liberal gun laws yeah, in the United States of America. In the United States, the first woman has been put on the FBI's list of the most wanted people. Joanne Chesema, 65, who now lives in Cuba, was convicted in 1977 for the murder of Trooper Werner Forster. Chesimad, who now goes by the name of Asata Shaku, was a former Black Liberation Army member and has a two million bounty on her head. She's also renowned to famous rapper Tupac Shakur. Chesimad was involved in a gun battle with Forster and another trooper who had stopped her car on New Jersey Turnpike for a motor violation. During Chesimad's trial, her attorney advanced that she was a victim of racism and mistreatment. Well, today marks the 40th anniversary of Trooper Forster's death and the FBI have sworn Chesimard will be brought to justice. I'm honored to stand here today alongside the New Jersey State Police, the New Jersey Attorney General's Office and the United States Marshal for the District of New Jersey to announce the addition of Joanne Chesimard to the FBI's most wanted terrorist list. While living openly and freely in Cuba, she continues to maintain and promote her terrorist ideology. She provides anti-U.S. government speeches espousing the Black Liberation Army message of revolution and terrorism. No person, no matter what his or her political or moral convictions are, is above the law. Joanne Chesimard is a domestic terrorist who murdered a law enforcement officer execution style. Our goal is to have her back here uh, back in a jail cell here for what she did. And by doubling the reward, we're going to bring additional attention to this and additional enthusiasm to folks who want to find her and bring her back here. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to Vox Africa, and we shall see you in a moment.